Hey everyone, this is Daniel and today is the beginning of my Power Platform YouTube special. Woohoo! Now, over the period of time, I've been getting so many compliments and so many comments on my YouTube channel, but I've also been getting some really great questions. So I went ahead and listed all those questions and now I have enough to start a whole special series on them. And today I'm going to focus on a question that came up about the environment variables. But first, here's my intro video. So the question was asked by none other than Steve Hanselman. He is a power addict and his question was really good. It said that, Daniel, is it possible to use an environment variable to store a color value? And you know what, Steve, it's, it's not as easy as it sounds and I bet you've already tried it, which is why you came and asked me as well. Um, and I had to do a little thinking about this as well because in, in, in the Power App Studio, it uses RGBA values and you just can't drop a hex value over there. But after doing some playing around and thinking it outside the box, I figured it out and I'm gonna show you how I did it. So let's just get out of this PowerPoint slide deck and jump straight into a demo. Now what I'm gonna do is I've, uh, let's just create a nice Canvas app. I'll make it a, a, you know, <clears throat> a tablet format over here so you can see it in big what's going on. And if this is the first time anybody's even getting used to or understanding what this RGBA is and you wanna get a little bit more insight on that, I'll show you how that works. I'll show you how this coloring formula, uh, which is fills or colors, how they work. And then I'll show you the switch, which you have to do over there using the environment variables. So the first thing is, let's actually just, you know, reference this entire screen. So in this entire screen, I'm going to come over here and it has a property called fill. So fill by default is white. If I go ahead and change that to gray, it be, or dim gray, the whole color changes, right? So you kind of understand that this is what I'm going to be uh, working with. Now, in addition to all of this, you can use these colors options that are already available, or you can go and do this. This is R, G, B, A. And then right here, you can see it says red, green, blue, and then the alpha value. Alphas are usually zero and one. And then for each of the values, you have from zero to 255. So let's actually play around with some colors over here. I'm gonna say for red, I'll just put in say 50. Um, let's go with 50, 50, and one, and see what we get. I'll close the brackets. All right, so it's actually a different shade of gray over there, which is pretty neat. Let's go and tinker around a little bit more. I put that 250, you see, so you kind of see under colors are changing over there. All right, so now let's take it to the next level, all right? So I'm gonna actually come over here, I'm gonna go to inputs and I'm gonna uh, drop uh, sliders. And I'll put in three, so I'm gonna do control C, control V right here, and I'll do another control V and I'll get that. So now we have nice three sliders over here. I'll also go ahead and put in some information so we know which one's which. So this one over here is red. Make it a little bit bigger. Just making it easier for you to understand what's going on. None of this is actually needed. All right, so we know now this is for the red color. Control C and Control V. This is going to be for the green color. So let me get that as green. And then I do a Control C, Control V. Control C, Control V, there you go. And I put this in and we've got now our blue as well. Now, what else I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop another label over here, right there, um, so that you can actually see the values that are coming through. So I could put in a label right here, and I'm gonna reference this one. So let's just call this as the <laughs> red slider. Let's call this guy as the green slider. And then this one is going to be the blue sl slider. All right, so I'm gonna reference this one now as the um, red slider dot value, okay? So right there, I make this guy also a little bigger, center, and so now we know what those values are. So I'm gonna control C, control V, put this one down here, and this is going to be our green slider. Perfect, grab that, control C, control V, and as you know, this is gonna be our blue slider. So what you'll see now is that when I come over here and I'm gonna move around with this, you just see the value. So you actually see that value showing up over there, but you also see this number. So that way you kind of get an idea of what is the actual value over there. The default being 50, low is zero, high is 255. Now, now that you see all these numbers over here and you see all that, let's start playing with this uh, formula over here. 
So in that formula, I am going to now come back and um, update that RGBA a little bit. All right, so I'll just go ahead and comment this one out. And I'm going to say RGBA. All right, open the brackets. And I'm going to start now saying red slider dot value, okay, comma, uh, it is the green slider dot value, and then the blue slider value. And I'll leave the last one as just one for now. All right, so see, this is what's happened. But check this out. Now the sliders are directly affecting the background color. So if I do it this way, see that? That is pretty awesome though. You are dynamically controlling these colors over there. And you can really get some fantastic colors. All right, but let's not stop over here. Kind of you're understanding which direction I'm heading towards. So now we've got the slider information. Now we've gone ahead and gotten all that. So you know, you, you get an idea that I can dynamically go ahead and change the values of the background color. I basically get the color. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take it to the next level. Uh, I am now going to create variables. And I'm going to assign the values to the variables, and these are the environment variables. I'm going to assign the value to the environment variables, and I'm going to go ahead and now manipulate this formula, and I'm going to reverse it by the slider value, and I'll use the environment variables, um, and we'll see what happens. But for now, you kind of understand where it's, what's happening is that you have these RGBA, you got static numbers over there, you can still use the RGBA and you make it dynamic. In this case, I just use the slider. But now I'm going to take it to the next level, which is use those environment variables. So first, let's go and actually take a look to see how we're going to set up all these environment variables over here. So I'm going to come in to our solutions. And in our solutions, I already have something called as environment variables. That environment variable was what I had do, done for actually a video of mine. I put that link below in this video and you'll also see it show up at the end of this video. That was the whole concept of me introducing you to environment variables. And I kind of like that idea because you could actually go and create a solution call environment variables and then in the form future, keep adding all those environment variables there. But if you try to put this as a full, like all my colors for the entire app, right? From the background to the headers, the footers, the font colors, everything all need to be environment variables. Just create another solution call, you know, colors and environment variable colors or something like that, but dedicate a whole solution for that because it'll become easier for you to administer it. What I'll do for the sake of this one is I'm just going to go and set it as the in the environment variable as well. Uh, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come in over here. I'm going to create a new environment variable. An environment variable, I'm going to call this as BG color blue. All right. So that's what it's going to be. BG color two description. I'll leave that as is. But here's the magic one, though. You got to go ahead and set it as your decimal number. Uh, don't go and use it as a text. Uh, just use it as a decimal for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set that as say 255. Um, depending on sometimes the formulas get a little tricky, just to be on the safe side, put the default value as 255 and also go and put that as uh, the current value as 255. So we're kind of safe in both the places over here. But keep that in mind, background BG color blue, done that, saving it goes and creates that as an environment variable. And then right after that, we'll go ahead and do that for the green as well. So you kind of getting the idea now that I'm not you know, making it really complicated that I don't put all numbers over here and then I got to go ahead and do some split. Or no, I'm just going to keep it very simple. And the simple thing is just create an environment for e uh, create a variable for each and every one of them. So I come in over here and I'm going to call this as BG color green. And for the green, I'm going to put that at say 83. This is going to be a decimal number. 83. Oh, that's the description. We can leave that as is. And I'll just go and create another value over here, current value. And then last, we'll take care of the red one. So VG color red decimal. And for this one, I'm going to put that as 63, 63, save. And we are done on the environment variable side. So let's jump back into our power app over here. And now that we are meddling with uh, environment variables, we got to go ahead and make some connectors. So there's right now no data that is connected to the app. That's fine. I'm going to click on add data. I'm going to click on connectors. And then I'm just going to type in uh, environment. Um, and actually 
click on see all entities and type in environment and I'm going to go and grab both of these environment definitions and I'm going to come back over here all entities environment variables all right so we've got these two things over here so now let's go ahead and do our final piece is well actually not final piece I want to first make sure that we are seeing the correct numbers all right so I come back over here and just to make sure for the blue one we went and got 255 for the green one we went and got 83 and for the red one we went and got 63 so first I just want to make sure am I getting those colors correctly so I'll just go ahead and actually grab control C control V all right and here I am going to change its formula so um, look up there's the formula for it look up environment variable values all right so got that comma then you got to put in the environment variable definition it is the uh, it's the environment variable definition not the plural just definition comma display name all right and then after that you got to type in exactly the same way that text is which is the bg and the color so in my case it is the bg and i put that as color red all right because this is going to be the red just to make sure i'm going to come back over here bg color red so everything is correct and then um it was already got the double quotes close the value dot value and close the brackets dot value and then any second now i should get the numbers so that's 63 over there see so i got the number now I come back over here and just make sure that the BG color red, BG color red is 63, came back over here, 63. So you're kind of getting it, now I'm getting the values over here. So I'm gonna do a control C and a control V just to make sure that I go ahead and now change this to green. And the moment I do, this color the number's gonna update. There you go, 83, control C, control V, come back over here, and I gotta change that to blue. Now just remember that keep this in mind, IntelliSense doesn't come and give you any suggestions you, because you're putting the text over there. You gotta get the exact text that you put over there as well, okay, and the variable. And there you go, so it's right added over here. So what does that finally mean? Finally, now I gotta go ahead and update this value. So now you have two options over here. I can go ahead and just reference this entire formula for each and every one of them, or, or you can go ahead and put a, something on the app on start. So that's what I did for my this demo over here, is I'm using a combination of the app on start, concurrent, and the set values. So that's what I mean. On the apps on start, I've done concurrent. Okay, go ahead and close the brackets. And here's what I'm doing. Set, and I'm just saying as red bar, and I come back over here, go ahead and copy that off, control C, come back in, close it, and I close that and I take care of my red variable. Next set, and I'm gonna call that as my green var. Go to my green here, copy the whole thing, control C, go back to my app on start, pasted it, close, and then the last one, I gotta hit shift and enter, set, and that's gonna be my blue var. <clears throat> and let me just go get that formula as well. Control C, app on start. And that actually looks good. No ellipses, everything is there. And then finally, when I come back on my here, on the actual formula, I'm gonna go ahead and comment this one out and add the new comment, which is RGBA. And I'm gonna call it red bar. I'm gonna call that as green bar for variable, blue bar, and one. And why it's not working? Because I haven't done this. Right click, run on start, and voila, it worked. So that is how I was able to go ahead and do um, the use of environment variables. And now, once I've got the actual RGBA, RGB values on the environment variables, you can use that across the entire environment and maintain that consistency for the colors in one single location over there using the combination of environment variables. So hopefully this video was helpful. Once again, thank you so much for all the YouTube compliments that I get, comments and the questions. Keep those questions coming because I'll be adding, making more videos of them. And as always, if you like this video, go ahead and click on subscribe and hit on that bell notification. And as always, keep power apping.